first of all, uh, let's uh, explain a little bit what is the SS7. Uh, SS7 is basically a network which interconnects all the mobile operators in the world. Uh, and through that network, uh, certain elements of telecom flows like uh, SMS messages and uh, USSD, uh, which is the most, uh, let's say, more dominant means of, of developing economies of uh, users in developing economies to interact with their bank uh, and their bank accounts. This network has been around since the 70s and uh, it hasn't changed much since then. And it is uh, riddled with a lot of uh, vulnerabilities and most of them cannot be resolved because of the re telecom basic requirement of backward compatibility. So we were tasked in handling this situation. We were given this hot potato and in the, in the Fiji uh, infrastructure and uh, security group. And what we've tried to do is analyze the situation since we, we determined that there is no fixing the core issues of SS7. There's only migrating it out um, once 2G and 3G and cellular will start to fade out. Then this, is, this network will also be fade out. But we're talking about five, 10 years from now. So what we focused on most is about learning how to educate the telecom regulators around the world, especially in developing economies, and help them to establish tools for mitigation. Because the mitigation of the vulnerabilities in SS7, in the, especially in the, financial, um, in the financial vertical, is not in the hands of the banks. It's in the hands of the operators. And there is a regulatory misalignment of interests here, in, which is inherent because the telecom regulator moderates the telecoms and the financial regulator moderates the financials. The people being hurt, the vertical being hurt due to scams is the financial sector, while the telecom sector is, is not held accountable. So this is our main goal in Fiji was to encourage them to learn, to, uh, to help to teach them about this and to instruct them on how to build roundtables of telecom and financial regulations in order to solve this issue. Like I said in my previous answer, there is a regulatory gap because the affected uh, vulnerabilities, the vulnerabilities affect the financial sector, but the vulnerabilities stem from the telecom sector. So it's, it's like a little no man's land uh, where you have, uh, let's say, contra you have contradicting jurisdictions between the telecom and the financials. So I think this sentence is very, very true. And this is what we're trying to do. We're trying to bring them together and show them use cases of successful roundtables that were conducted around the world um, in several countries uh, that helped solve this and bridge the gap. And once the telecom regulators and the financial regulators sat on a single table, discussed the issues, they were able to come up with effective regulation, which regulated both the telcos and the banks uh, and the DFS providers in order to successfully mitigate those SS7 vulnerabilities. In study group 11, which I am a member of, we have already um, drafted or we already con committed uh, the technical report from Fiji as a technical report for uh, ITU on study group 11. And we also finished and committed the first recommendation, which is uh, Q3057, which is the base for uh, establishing trust within the SS7 network, which is addressing the core vulnerability of the SS7 network because it was designed so early in the late 70s, early 80s, that cybersecurity was never an issue. Nobody thought that about hackers and that die and that day and that day and age. So uh, there was no security in, in this network, and there still is no security in the network. So we are building in study group 11, we are building the foundations for establishing uh, trust uh, and, and, and security inside the SS7 network. Uh, hopefully it will be um, it will be in time and it will be adopted uh, before the SS7 network uh, shuts down once 2G and 3G are uh, shut down as well. And, uh, and that's one contribution. Uh, another contribution which we are working on in study group 11 is uh, due to the advancement of, of SIM cards, of technology of SIM cards, 
uh, and the computation capability which relies inside the SIM card, it is not possible to actually encrypt uh, and decrypt uh, data inside the SIM card. And what we are working on today is uh, looking at a way that a new generation of SIM cards can handle encryption over the SS7 network, especially for USSD, which is one of the two most dominant uh, uh, mediums in which uh, developing economies' users access their bank accounts. And USD is, of course, plain text because, once again, it was standardized really, really, really long time ago. And we're trying to do that. So this is currently the two uh, ongoing activities in study group 11, which are aimed at solving and mitigating those uh, SS7 vulnerabilities in developing economies.